Let's talk now about the weekend. Oh my gosh, the weekend's here. It's the Independence Day holiday weekend. It's a long weekend. People are traveling. People are going to be outside. Of course, we have an excessive heat warning. Why would you want to be outside right now? But you want to be outside this weekend because it's a lot of fun. Fireworks, food preparation. People are going to be grilling out. And of course, we got the heat stroke warning out there. Let's um, let's bring in Dr. R. Uh, a doctor we haven't seen in a while, Arlisha Jones with Methodist Medical Group. She is joining us on the digital desk. Um, how are you, Dr. Jones? Good morning. Good. Long time no see. <laughs> Long time no see. If I, if you could, could you tilt down your camera just a little bit so we can sure. see more of you? We, we see a lot. There we is go. That better? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. So listen, I want to ask you about some of the things that people need to keep in mind. You know, we hear so much about the Independence Day holiday weekend we, and people get kind of, you know, roll their eyes. Oh, you're going to tell us it's too hot and fireworks and all that stuff. But every year I know that hospitals are just packed with people who make silly and dumb mistakes, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. That happens. That definitely happens. <laughs> So tell us some of the biggest mistakes uh, that people make uh, during uh, 4th of July. So one, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things and you all have been touching on it, you know, repeatedly is just not, you know, staying hydrated when it's very hot outside. Um, so, you know, watching out for signs of like heat exhaustion, heat stroke, all those things you all have talked about, that's going to be very important. Um, but, you know, when it comes to fireworks, you just want to make sure that at least with the area around you, there's not any kids around. Kids oftentimes can come into, um, you know, can can come into that space where fireworks are, are going off and certainly are, are prone to or more susceptible to, to injury in that case. Um, so making sure that that area is clear of kids, making sure that you also have, um, you know, the, the proper equipment around you, you know, when you're using these fireworks, you also want to make sure that there's going to be water around um, as well that you have something that should something start to spark unexpectedly, that you have something um, at the water or a fire extinguisher to be able to put that out. Dr. Alicia Jones, I, we need to go through some of the warning signs of heat stroke out there. I know it's very dangerous. That's kind of the worst out of all the heat related illnesses. Yep. Can you go through some of those warning signs for us? Sure, yeah. So when you're talking about heat exhaustion, you may notice somebody that's excessively sweating. They may have a little bit of dizziness. They may start to um, look a little cold or, or pale in the face at that point um you know you need to make sure that you get them into a cooler area give them something to very cold to drink start to take off clothes if you're able to to get them to to cool down that's more of the the heat exhaustion when you're talking about heat stroke um you know the person you'll still be dizzy they may have more confusion um not uh, if that's the case, of course, still you want to get them into a cooler area. I wouldn't necessarily advocate for giving them something to drink because if they're um, not fully coherent, they may be to the point where they're close to passing out, in which case they may not be able to protect their airway. So you don't want to give them something to drink that um, could potentially cause them to choke, but certainly putting cool things on them, cool uh, wash rags or what, whatever is cool that is around you um, to be able to do that. And of course, call 911. First and foremost, call 911 if you're concerned about the, if you're concerned about that person um, showing signs of heat stroke. We know a lot of people are going to be out and about on uh, on the water, maybe perhaps in a swimming pool. You got boats, uh, people are going to be on the lake, that sort of thing. Um, let's talk about maybe some of the best ways, methods to stay safe. I know that um, we want everyone to, to wear kind of a life vest when you're out on the boat, right? Of course. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you want to make sure that um, there are life vests that are available and they're the appropriate size, um, especially when talking about kids that are going to be around um, as well. You want to make sure that there's always an adult that is present. Um, if you're talking about, you know, going around the pool, same things apply, maybe not necessarily for life vests, but that there's at least an adult around someone, um, you know, that can have eyes on the little ones that may be running around. <clears throat> 
And then um, a lot of people are going to be grilling out, and the last thing you want to do is, is cook up something uh, where everyone gets sick. So um, tell us the temperatures <laughs> yeah. where people need to be. Uh, maybe you do want to get people sick. I don't know. Uh, if you don't like the relatives <laughs> or the friends that are over, you know. You don't like them, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, but can you go over some of the temperatures where it needs to be cold and, and hot? Sure, yeah. So you want to make sure, like, especially with your meats, that you are cooking them to the adequate um, temperature. You know, red meat like steaks is definitely going to cook different from chicken the chicken has a higher temperature at which it's considered you know to be done so chicken's about 165 steak if you're doing that you can go as low as 135 if you're talking about a medium cook on that um so you want to make sure that uh you have a meat uh, thermometer out to test the doneness and you know a lot of times they'll give you a little cheat sheet on the top of the thermometer and it'll say um you know chicken needs to be done here seafood here meat here that sort of thing. So making sure that you're cooking your meat to the adequate temperature. Certainly with uh, colder items, ideally, if you can, if they're going to be outside, you're going to want to try and set them, I would say, probably in a metal bowl, something that can keep uh, something cold for an extended period of time, but then setting that bowl in another bowl of ice um, to try and keep that temperature down on it. But um, same thing applies if you can keep a thermometer in there to make sure okay is this still at a temperature of you know 37 degrees you know you don't want it really to go much above what you would have a refrigerator be at any other tips um suggestions that you have for anybody else uh, you know we have thousands of people watching you right now <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I was uh, discussing some of this with my uh, husband who loves to grill and he was talking about, um, you know, people that when they are grilling to make sure that, um, you know, you're not using anything with uh, metal bristle to clean your grill off because those bristles can certainly break off and sometimes get into the meat that you're cooking with um, and can definitely cause a lot of damage and it's not something that you would see always with the naked eye. Um, so really important to instead try and clean that, uh, try and clean the grill with some crumbled up aluminum foil or even an onion can be used to help clean. Well, um, and of course, while you're outside, remember to wear your sunscreen. Uh, that, yes, sunscreen. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> no question. Yeah. Uh, so sunscreen and a sunscreen. wide brim hat. <laughs> yes, that those hats, too. And we, we just want to say um, from Action News 5, congratulations. We understand that you were out uh, for a few weeks because you had a baby. So we want to say congratulations to you and your family. Thank you so much. You have had a little boy. So now we're a party of five and we are juggling now. <laughs> awesome. Yes. And lots of sleep, I'm sure. Just kidding. Uh, so. <laughs> a little bit here and there. <laughs> right, right. Good stuff. Well, hey, that's great news. Thanks so much again for coming on the Digital Desk. Hope to speak to you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good morning.